So I just got back from seeing the Eras tour from Taylor Swift, and to be honest, it was pretty incredible. It was an absolutely amazing show, but I came back really inspired. So what I wanted to do this week was show you how to make a song like Taylor Swift, specifically in the production styles of when she works with Jack Antonoff or somebody like Max Martin and Shellback. So we're really going to be focusing on Reputation, Lover, and Midnight's as some of the big references for this. Here's exactly what we're making in the video today. What's up? It's Austin here from Make Pop Music. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. We are going to dive into Cubase in one second and start making this Taylor Swift song, but before we do, I do just want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Baby Audio. Baby Audio is a plugin company that honestly makes some of the best plugins on the market. You've seen me use a ton of their stuff like Crystalline, Parallel Aggressor, Spaced Out, all of those really, really amazing plugins. But in this video today, I actually really want to highlight their brand new synth plugin, the BA1. It's their first ever synthesizer plugin, and this thing is incredible. It's monophonic and polyphonic. It's got a bunch of cool effects built in and it has such a cool vibe and characteristic that you don't get from any other soft sense because this is the first time that any company has replicated this classic synth called the CS01 which is a really niche and kind of weird left of center synth and honestly we're going to use it a ton in this video today you're going to get to see a ton of the really really amazing features and hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a really good understanding of what this plugin does so thank you to baby audio for sponsoring this video definitely go check out the BA1 and all of their other incredible plugins you can find a link in the description where you can see their current offer offers and deals, and you can read more information about the BA1 or any of their other plugins. Let's dive into Cubase and let's start creating a song. Okay, to start, I feel like anytime I start a pop song, it's always pretty safe to start with brass. It might not make it to the final edit, but I feel like it at least gives me a really, really good sound to kind of base everything off of. So there's some really cool presets in here. I just have this one called Basic Brass, and what I did is turned on a little bit of chorus, and I adjusted the envelope and the filter so it lasts a little bit longer. And we're gonna be using a nice one, five, four progression. We're in C major. This is something that Taylor Swift uses a lot. It's a key that she writes in a lot. And it's something that Jack Antonoff specifically will produce in a ton. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down the main chords and we can build it out from there. To add a little bit of extra texture, what I wanna do is I wanna layer up that brass with something like a soft key sound. So there's this really cool preset called Gentle Tines. And I've actually flipped it over to the, uh, you know, color scheme of purple. There's a bunch over here that you can choose from. Again, we are gonna be highlighting some elements of the BA1, but this thing is incredible. Here's a distance sounds like. And as you can hear, there's like this slight bit crushing and this wave that I really, really like, especially because Jack Antonoff uses a ton of analog synths. And you can get that just by dragging this battery effect down here. Once you drag this down, it really starts to degrade the audio. So we're gonna use that to our advantage and we're using the exact same chords. We're just changing up a little bit of the voicing on these just so it layers up nice. And here's what we have. Let's go ahead and start laying some drums down so we can get a nice rhythm, and then we're gonna build out the synths a lot more from there. Here's what we have for our drum arrangement. I'm going very Jack Antonoff and Max Martin inspired, and what we're doing is we're layering a lot of percussion, and we're adding in some tonal percussion. So you're gonna hear that we have this big roomy analog kick right here that happens on the one, and then one thing that they'll do is they'll just tuck in some nice kind of electronic inspired uh, drum samples. And then on top of that, we're just layering a bunch of cool little like toms and percussion noises and tonal snares so we can get something that feels really nice. And then we're gonna build that out a little bit more by adding in some extra layers. That really leans into that Taylor Swift-esque uh, drum arrangement, especially with things like those tonal snares. All of the drums in this are found in our Dark Pop Volume 1 and Dark Pop Volume 2 pack, so if you want to check those out, you can head over to makepopmusic.com. But I want to go ahead and spice these up, so let's do something with RC20. I dragged on RC20, and what I've done is filtered out some stuff, added a little bit of distortion, some slight bit crushing, and I'm really just using this to add a little bit of vibe to this drum arrangement, because I don't need them to be so full body. We'll kind of let them open up as the arrangement opens up. Let's go ahead and start layering up some of these synths so we can get something that feels a little bit bigger. One of the things of Jack Antonoff's production is they tend to sound pretty simple, but there's actually a lot going on. And then Max Martin, on the other hand, 
has like a million tracks happening. So his songs also sound rather simple, but you can tell that they're super wide, super layered, super thick. So we're going to kind of work on finding a nice middle ground that could still work for somebody like Taylor Swift. I found a couple really cool things that I wanted to highlight. Number one is going to be this really fast RP synth. So a lot of the time I don't use like an arpeggiation model inside my synthesizer. I'll just really write in the ARP that I want. And I'm just using this preset called Casio Tone. So it's really soft. It's really tucked in there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to write in this pretty crazy arpeggiation. And we're just opening that up with a little bit of filtering. And one thing that I wanted to do is add crystalline so we get a little bit more room and reverb in it. There is a reverb built into the BA1 plugin. However, I wanted a slightly different characteristic, so we're layering crystalline over that. And then I basically found this big Jupiter string patch, printed it, and just reversed it. That gives us a nice little intro. And then for the actual synths, what we're doing is we have two synths that are gonna kind of make the main little progression kind of synth lead. And I have one pan to the left and one pan to the right. One's pan 60% left and 60% right. And here's what they sound like. So this plugin started with Synthwave Pluck, and then what I did is I just kind of messed with the envelope and the filter. It's really easy to do that. There's also a sync button here if you want to sync it to your actual BPM. I didn't need that for all of this. And then what we're doing is we're just pulling some of the tone down so it's just kind of really thin and bright. And then we're just adding quite a bit of delay, reverb, and chorus. And again, we have that battery right at 60%. So it has that kind of like analog warbling that really adds a nice little bit of character and depth and dimension. And then on top of that, we've just got crystalline as well well. And then we have Dubby McDubface, which is one of the funnier names of a preset. Just a nice, really good kind of brassy stab. And again, I'm doing some filtering on this. This one we have a little bit cleaner with the battery up to 78. And then again, we're kind of using these tone knobs to shape everything. And here's what they sound like. This one also has spaced out on it, doing a little bit of this kind of like arpeggiated pattern. Because sometimes with an arpeggio, I want things like delays and reverbs tucked in so they can have a little bit of extra space. So here's what those sound like. And as you can tell, we're kind of filtering everything out for this verse. We're gonna open it up as the song kind of opens. The last thing that I have is this soft little string sound that's really just holding out notes. And I'm using the speaker function on this. This is a really cool function where it kind of band passes everything and adds a little bit of saturation. Here's what it sounds like. And it's tucked in really low. So altogether, you're kind of getting this vibe for all the synths now. Then we're just using that same kind of Jupiter brass rev up and that little fast arpeggio. And then we're going into this soft brass right here that holds out one of my favorite styles of sounds. Again, using that chorus, it kind of reminds me of like the classic Juno chorus. So it's one of my favorite sounds. I'm gonna use that all the time. And then the last little thing that we have for this verse right now is I found this cool patch called Raynaught. And then what I'm doing is I'm just kind of holding it and it kind of makes this really weird cinematic swell. One thing that I heard Jack Antonoff using a ton in Midnight's was doing those cool little like saw and square tile uh, swells in the background just to add a little bit of kind of ear candy. Let's go ahead and keep fleshing this out. I'm gonna kind of get the general verse arrangement and then we'll go over that because we still have to make a chorus as well. Here we are, I fleshed out the first verse. As you can see, we're using a lot of automation. So you can actually automate just within the BA1. So we're doing things like automating cutoff and filters and releases of certain patches just to give us a little bit of extra oomph and so it can feel nice and kind of open. And then you can see that we're doing quite a bit of automation with drums. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the new stuff that we added. So we'll go into the drum arrangement first. So you can see that we're adding a steady hat here. We're adding this kind of big snare called the BAP snare. And then other than that, we're just kind of letting that filter open up a little bit and then it opens up completely.
The only real element that we added was this extra hat layer here that's kind of just doing a special little pattern that's not a really standard thing. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, we did add some bass. So we have some bass right here for the first little part of the verse. It's called From the Depths. It's just this nice little kind of soft bass. And what we're doing is we're just using that to draw a cool little pattern just to add a little bit of emphasis. It's tucked in really, really low. And then what we're doing is we're letting that open up a little bit. So one thing that Jackie Zanoff and Max Martin will kind of do a lot is rather than adding in a bunch of really new kind of melodies and ideas, they'll just add these subtle little layers. And what they'll do is they'll kind of slightly change things like the bass pattern just to make it have a little bit of special bounce. So here's what the verse is sounding like now. I can go ahead and hide all this automation because it's a little distracting, but here's what we have. All right, let's go to where everything finally opens up. So this is where that filter is pulling off of the verse uh, drums completely. And here's where the kind of synths will open up as well. So you can hear that we've got these basic brass that we've been using since the beginning really opening up. You can see the cutoff kind of automates up right there. We're doing the same thing with the soft keys. And one thing that's really cool about this synth is you can hit this little V up here and it'll make it velocity sensitive or not. So if you don't want it to be velocity sensitive, it doesn't have to be. But if you go ahead and engage this, it's really nice that you could have something like this or like this. It can just add a nice little bit of realism. So. There's a velocity control right here. Next to that, you also have poly polyphonic and monophonic mode. And then other than that, you have your MIDI CC. So like every other soft synth, you can go ahead and you can turn this on and you can select different encoders on your MIDI keyboard or on your control surface or whatever you're using. So uh, let's go ahead and let's listen to what all of these sound like while they open. And while we have this brand new bass right here called the Baby Reese, it's just this nice, really, really, really big kind of fat Reese bass. And we're not using any chorus. We're just slightly tweaking the filtering. And then one thing that you can kind of do is you can crossfade between oscillator one and oscillator two, and that can give you a whole big range of textures. So if we go to oscillator one, you're getting that straight up like PMW saw over there. And if we go to oscillator two, you get that saw and, uh, or that square, excuse me. And so if we crossfade them, you kind of get the best of both worlds. So we've got that happening now. That really opens up the arrangement between taking the filtering off the drums and opening up that bass to be a lot bigger and more aggressive. We have something that is feeling really, really dynamic. Now we're pulling that little fast arpeggio that we had before. It's just that same preset. I've just opened up the filter a little bit with a Casio tone and that's just kind of going back and forth. One thing that I could do that might be a cool little thing is add in something like an auto panner just to add a little bit of stereo width. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll just sync that to my project and let's hear it. Yep, I like that. And then we also have this uh, fake flanger. So it's a preset out of the BA1 as well that I've printed and reversed. And what I did was I turned on the glissando, so I can show you right here. This gliss right here, if you turn that up, then it'll, it'll have that kind of like shifting between notes. So you can go from a lower octave to a higher octave. And so that's exactly what I did. I just played an octave two down and then hit a higher note. And while that kind of ramped up, then I just kind of time aligned that to how long I needed that to be inside of my actual session. So really cool effect. It's just a cool example of how you can kind of use a pretty standard preset and then you can go ahead and change one thing like adding a little bit of gliss or adding a little bit of extra delay. And just, you can get something nice that has its own ear candy within it, but doesn't do too much to distract listeners in the actual arrangement. So 
The verse, I think, is pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and flesh out a chorus and then we'll add vocals. Here's our final arrangement for the chorus. So what we're gonna do is kind of have something similar happening with the drums. We're just gonna ramp up the hats a little bit and we're gonna make the kick a little bit louder and punchier and we're gonna layer over like a nice little kind of hip hop trap snare. This is something that she did a lot in Reputation and she did it a little bit in Lover as well. So we're gonna include it in our. One thing that they do a lot in Taylor Swift's records as well, Jack Antonoff and Max Martin have both done this, is add things like those really roomy stomps. So you can see right here, we have this little abort mission uh, sample that just happens on the one. And then what we did is we have these little analog kicks that have some room printed into them, and we're using those just to layer over that kind of hip hop kick. If we were to take those two things out, it kind of loses a little bit of the intensity. It just doesn't feel super Taylor Swift without it. So we're gonna leave those in. We added in a couple little risers and effects. So these are nothing crazy. They're just all out of our dark pop pack. Just your kind of standard tension builder. Let it hit really big on the one, adds a ton of impact. Let's go onto this bass because this is really where things start to ramp up. So not only are we using different patches and layering them, but we're also allowing this bass to sustain for a lot longer. And this is one thing that can make a chorus really feel like a chorus is rather than going absolutely insane, adding a billion different elements that get really cluttered, what you can do is you can go ahead and you can just let that bass ride out a little bit longer. Same thing with chords. And here's what it sounds like. And this is a mix of three patches. Again, all from the BA1. So we've got the baby reset we used earlier. And then we have the bowed guitar. This is a really, really cool preset. It adds a nice little bit of vibe. You can see that we're using the drive on this one a lot. So we're saturating it an absolute ton. And then what we're doing is we're doing a little bit of FM modulation. So frequently frequency modulation, just to make it not so kind of standard and clean, like your kind of traditional saw wave, square wave, sine wave, triangle wave, etc. And then we're adding a little bit of chorus and bringing this battery down. So we get this really kind of gnarly, super lo-fi gritty bass. That's a really nice layer. And then under that, we have this one called sub it. Just a nice little sub synth. Again, brought the battery down so we get some of that wave and I'm taking it up an octave so it can just add a little bit of a harmonic. All together, sounds really nice. And then on top of that, all of the synths are kind of doing similar things to what they were doing in the verse. We're just holding out these chords for a little bit longer and then we're just adding in a couple layers. So we have this one called sync and the pad. And you can hear that we're getting some of that like wobbling with the with the actual um, like oscillation. We're using this low frequency oscillator right here, this LFO, and I just have the sync set to off. So I'm kind of manually adjusting the speed because I don't want it to be super perfect like a tremolo or a vibrato or anything like that. So that just adds a nice little bit of wave because without it, it's a little boring. So we add that just to kind of spice it up just a little bit. And then same thing with this nostalgia organ. We just have this nice kind of lo-fi saturated, super reverby sound. You can hear what happens if we hit that speaker mode. It'll kind of mono it out. And then what it'll do is it'll add just a bunch of kind of filtering and saturation. Other than that, we've got the Jupiter strings to really make this seem grand and open it up a lot. Might turn the battery on those up just a little bit so they're a hair cleaner. And then what we've got is we've got two little synths, one panned 100% left and one panned 100% right. And these are both just doing this nice little top lead that adds a nice little bit of ear candy. And that is pretty much it for the instrumental. I'm gonna lay vocals in and then show you that, but here's what it sounds like going into the chorus.
So let me add vocals and do my last little bit of automation and then we'll be good to go. Vocal production on this is nothing crazy. We've done a couple of Taylor Swift videos now. We're kind of using a lot of those same things. So I don't want to take up too much time. The main thing is we kind of have one big vocal for the verse for the first A and B section. And we've got some effects on it. We were a picture perfect romance. If I take off that harmonizer and that plate, it's just a nice kind of standard pop vocal, but adding something like that harmonizer from Eventide and adding something like these plates, just to kind of spread it out and give it that kind of like sing in a bathroom lo-fi vibe that Taylor Swift has had on Lover and on uh, Midnight's, did a lot for the track, I think. So it sounds like this. We were a picture perfect romance. We had the whole then I'm doing the same thing on this vocal uh, verse vocal too. I'm just adding a little bit of extra reverb and delay on these sins. Where it really kicks up is for this kind of pre-chorus, I'm going for a cleaner, just kind of pop vocal. So it's just some, you know, EQ, compression, a little bit of uh, de-essing, and then we're just layering it, one up the center, one 100% left, and one 100% right. I'd stay up with all of my friends, past 2 a.m. talking my shit about you. They told me I should never try to compromise. Nothing too wild or noteworthy on that. And then we go into the chorus where I have a hook lead right down the middle. I have a hook lead to the left. I have a hook lead to the right. I have a harmony to the right. I have a harmony to the left. And then I have a second harmony to the right and to the left. And here's what all of those sounds like. Run for the hills and never look back. Lock all your texts. I never thought that you'd be the one to make me open my eyes. Those harmonies do a lot for really making it feel like a Taylor Swift hook because without it, here's what we have. Run for the hills and never look back. Lock all your texts. I never thought that you'd be the one to make me open my eyes. So in the chorus, Taylor Swift will typically go pretty grand with things like layering and harmony and adding cool little ad libs or kind of one off vocal tracks. So definitely don't be afraid to do that. As far as mixing and processing, we're not doing anything outside of our norm on this. So just tuning, EQ, compression, DSing, compression, a little bit of multiband. EQ and then the last DSer. That's literally it. And then we just have this big kind of post chorus vocal that's the same thing. I just added tape by Baby Audio just to give us a little bit of saturation. So it feels nice and kind of cinematic. I was a ghost to me when I was with you. A flickering memory of all the days I was new. So by adding that tape saturation and by adding that doubler, it gives us something that feels like a vocal effect, not necessarily a lead vocal. And that is everything that we have for this song. So again, all of the synths, all of the basses, all of the keys and everything like that were the Baby Audio BA1. So before I show you the full walkthrough, definitely make sure you go check out the BA1 from Baby Audio. Again, there is a link in the description where you can check out their current rates and offers for that plugin, as well as all of the other incredible plugins from Baby Audio. So thanks again for uh, sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and let's hear this final little playthrough. We were a picture perfect role.
And there you have it. That is how you produce a Taylor Swift inspired pop song, especially in the style of Jack Antonoff and Max Martin and Shellback. So if you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments down below what videos you want to see from us at Make Pop Music because we do take your requests. Again, thank you to Baby Audio for sponsoring this video. Head over to babyaud.io to check out the BA1 and all of their other incredible plugins. There is a link in the description. Other than that, if you want to support our channel, you can also head over to makepopmusic.com and check out all of our own sample packs, preset packs. We have a course. There's a ton of really, really cool stuff over there. So head over to both of those sites. We really, really appreciate your support. We'll see you soon with much more content, but until then, much love, everyone. Peace.